Solving a differential equation simply means finding a relation between x and y that actually produces this equation given in the question. For example, we know that if y is a function of x, given as x square, then its derivative, or dy over dx, is simply 2x. Now, in a differential equation, we are given the derivative first, like this equals 2x, and our job is to work backwards and find which y can produce this rate of change. So solving it is basically reversing the process of differentiation and recovering the original function or relation. There are different ways to solve these equations, and we will explore a few of those methods step by step. Variable separable method. This is the easiest method, and the one you should try first whenever you can. The trick is to rearrange the equation so that everything that involves y sits on one side, and everything that involves x sits on the other side. Once you do that, you integrate both sides. For example, if the derivative of y with respect to x equals x times y, then you move the y part to the left, producing 1 divided by y times the derivative of y equals x times the derivative of x. Now integrate the left with respect to y and the right with respect to x. This is super simple. The left integral becomes the natural log of y, and the right integral becomes x squared divided by 2 plus c. Keep in mind, never ever forget this c or the constant of integration term. Finally, solve for y by taking the exponential on both sides to remove this log. This gives y equals exponential of x squared divided by 2 plus c, which you can rewrite as some constant k times exponential of x squared divided by 2 if you like. The important steps to keep in mind are separate, integrate, and then simplify. Next up, we have homogeneous differential equations. A differential equation is called homogeneous when the rule for the derivative depends only on the ratio of y to x. When that happens, we simply use the substitution y equals v times x, where v is a new unknown function of x. This substitution, using product rule for derivative, changes the derivative of y with respect to x into v plus x times the derivative of v with respect to x, and then the equation usually becomes separable in v and x. For example, if the derivative of y with respect to x equals x plus y over x, which is nothing but 1 plus the ratio of y over x, then set y equal to v times x. This gives v plus x times derivative of v with respect to x equals 1 plus v. Then cancel v from both sides, leaving this equals 1, and thus the derivative of v with respect to x equals 1 divided by x, which integrates to v equals logarithm of x plus c, and then use y equals vx to find y. Next up, we have linear differential equations. Some equations are linear in y meaning the derivative of y with respect to x plus some function of x, which is p times y equals another function q of x. If you ever observe your differential equation having this form, then there is a special way to solve this problem. We multiply the whole equation by a special thing called the integrating factor, which is simply a function of x denoted by mu of x, which is equal to the exponential of the integral of that coefficient function p of x. Now, after you have found mu of x, then simply use this formula, which is y times mu of x equals integral of q of x times mu x with respect to x. Let me show you an example for the same. Suppose we have derivative of y with respect to x plus 2y equals exponential of x. So first of all, Check out which type of differential equation is this. It is of this form, right? Where we have p of x as 2 and q of x is e raised to x. So using this formula, the integrating factor, mu of x becomes e raised to the integral of 2 
with respect to x, which is e raised to 2x. Next, use this to get y times mu of x or e raised to 2x equals integral of q times mu of x or integral of e raised to x times e raised to 2x, which is nothing but e raised to x plus 2x or 3x. Now this integral is equal to e raised to 3x over 3. Again, don't forget to add plus c. Now in order to solve for y, divide by e raised to 2x on both sides like this. I hope you know the basic power rule. This becomes e raised to x over 3, and this becomes c times e raised to minus 2x. This is our final answer. See, it was super duper easy. Now, if you want to check whether or not this solution is correct, then simply find dy over dx and substitute it into this equation. Now we will gear up our level and look for exact differential equations. Some equations can be written as a function m, which is function of both x and y times derivative of x or dx plus a function n which is again a function of both x and y times derivative of y or dy equals zero. Now they are called exact differential equations when the partial derivative of m with respect to y equals the partial derivative of n with respect to x. Now, if this condition is true, that is, if this equation is exact, then there exists a single function f of x and y where it equals either integral of m times dx or n times dy, such that f of x and y equals c, where c is the constant of integration. Note that we can also rewrite f of x and y such that whose partial derivative with respect to x is m and whose partial derivative with respect to y is n. So these two things are telling the same thing, and also these two things are conveying the same message. Now suppose we have this equation. Here m is this function and n is this function, right? So the partial derivative of m with respect to y equals 3. Also, the partial derivative of n with respect to x equals 3. This means both of them are equal and thus this differential equation is exact. Next we find f using this integral of m times dx which will be this. Now, since we are integrating this expression with respect to x only, and thus we will consider y as some other constant which has nothing to do with x. Now, integral of this is x square, and integral of this is 3y times x plus g of y. You might be wondering why I brought g of y here. See, as already mentioned, when we integrate m with respect to x, we must treat y as if it is just some fixed constant, because the integration is happening only in the x direction. This means we can integrate all parts that contain x, but we cannot decide anything about pieces that depend only on y, since from the point of view of this integration, they behave like unknown constants. So we write those leftover y-only contributions as g of y. If this was confusing to understand, so find the partial derivative of this part only with respect to x. It will give us this, right? Which is nothing but m. But hey, if I add, say, y cubed to this expression, and then find the partial derivative of this entire thing with respect to x, it will again give us this, right? Which is nothing but m. This happened because the y cube is independent of x. So therefore, we add this g of y, which can be any function of y, that vanishes when we find the partial derivative with respect to x. To find this g of y, what we do is we find the partial derivative of f with respect to y. Now this x square cancels out, because now we treat x as a constant, and this part gives 3 times x, and this is dg over dy. But hey, look here. We have the partial derivative of f with respect to y as n. So equate both of them. 3x cancels, and we get this. This is now super simple. 
we get the g of y as 2y squared. Put it here. So finally, we have f of x and y as this and this equals some constant c. This way, you can see that we have somehow found an implicit relationship between y and x. Now it's up to you to leave it like this or solve for y in terms of x by considering the fact that this equation can be rearranged as a quadratic equation in terms of y. Now a question for you. Suppose we have this differential equation with us. First find whether or not it is exact. Then solve for f of x and y, and then equate it to c. Give me the final relationship between x and y in the comments. Lastly, we will discuss Bernoulli method, which shows how a nonlinear equation becomes linear. Bernoulli equations look like the derivative of y with respect to x plus p of x times y equals q of x times y raised to some power n. This is almost the same as the linear method, except for this nonlinear term y to the n. In order to make this nonlinear equation to linear, we use substitution. Let v equal y raised to the power 1 minus n. So dv over dx becomes this in terms of dy over dx. Then rewrite this equation in terms of v to get this. Hey, this is a linear differential equation, right? This entire thing acts as some p of x, and this thing acts as some q of x. Now you know how to solve it further using the integrating factor, and thus I will not explain it again. Find v of x, and then using this find y of x, and that's it. This is how we handle different types of first-order differential equations. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good.